My name is Dr. Ibrahim Chedizu Nicholas, and today we'll be talking about radioactivity. In the course of this um, short um, presentation, we'll look at what radioactivity is, we'll try to look at radioactive substances, the uses of radioactivity, the harmful nature of radioactivity, we'll also look at the atom briefly, the composition of the atom, as well as the properties of some of these radioactive substances that are being released from an unstable nucleus or an unstable atom. Now I would like to start by saying radioactivity can be defined as the spontaneous emission or the sudden release of powerful but very dangerous rays from an element known as a radioactive element. The radiations that are being released from these radioactive elements are very powerful and they are very harmful. So because of that, they have the positive side of these radiations that are being released and they also have the negative side of the radiations that are being released by these, from these radioactive elements. And we have a number of radiations. We have uranium, we have thorium, we have radium, we have radon, we have polonium. There are so many of them which um, we would find if you go to your periodic table where of um, elements. Now, I would also like us to remember that every element is made up of atoms. That the atom is composed of three distinct particles. We have the protons, we have the neutrons, and we have the electrons. The protons are positively charged particles. The neutrons are neutral, that is, they carry no charge. And two of them, the protons and the neutrons together, are found or located in the nucleus of every atom of an element and then we have the third particle or the third um, composition of the atom which is the electrons and the electrons are negatively charged particles now in a stable atom there are forces within the nucleus which enable the protons and the neutrons to remain together but in a radioactive element the nuclear forces that are there are not sufficient to keep the nucleus together so with time, the nucleus may suddenly disintegrate or break apart and send out small pieces of the nucleus as powerful but very dangerous radiations. Now when this happens, the radioactive atom takes another form. Now this disintegration keeps taking place until a stable atom is attained and then that stops that radioactive decay that is taking place. So next we'll be looking radioactive decay is now it says radioactive decay occurs when a certain quantity of a radioactive material suddenly breaks up to form a stable one and a typical example is an unstable atom of uranium 236 when it suddenly breaks apart throwing off some pieces of this nucleus and changes into radium 226 now radium 226 is also an unstable radioactive element now the disintegration process or the um, disintegration uh, 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 mechanism wouldn't just stop there because the radium nucleus is not stable so it continues until it breaks and eventually becomes lead 204 now lead 204 is a stable atom so the disintegration process stops there but during this disintegration process whereby uranium is breaking down from uranium 236 to 226 radium there are certain particles that are being released that i said that are harmful we have um, the alpha particles which is represented by a helium atom with an atomic number of um, two and a mass number of four we also have the beta particles, we also have the gamma particles. All these are radioactive particles that are usually released when a radioactive decay is taking place. I would also try to look at these radioactive particles, like I said earlier. We have the alpha particle, which is usually represented with a helium atom. We have the beta particle, which is usually represented with an electron. And then we have the gamma ray. Now, the next thing we'll look at now are the properties of these alpha particles. Alpha particles are slightly bent by a magnetic field. In an electric field, they tend to move towards the negative side of the electric field, meaning that they are positively charged particles. Now, also, they do not penetrate very far when moving in air. In fact, their movement in air can be stopped by 
a notebook or a piece of paper then they have very large masses their masses are larger than that of beta particles so because of this their large mass they tend to move very short distance in air and then finally due to their large mass as well they knock off electrons when moving through air to produce ions now ions are produced when electrons are either added to um, an element or when electrons are knocked off from an element um, we have what we call the cations and the anions by the time we get to talk about them um, chemical symbols and elements we get to see what ions are fully the types different types of cations we have we look at anions we also look at um, radicals Then for the beta particle, the beta particle, they are bent in an opposite direction to the alpha particle in a magnetic field. So if, for example, the alpha particle are bending towards the north pole, the beta particle would move towards the south pole. That's opposite directions. Now for the beta particle, they move towards the positive side in an electric field. So for the fact that they move to the positive side in an electric field, it means they are negatively charged particles. They also have the ability to penetrate further than alpha particles in air, and they are very light particles. Because of their light nature, or because of their light mass, they travel further distances in air than the alpha particles. And then finally, they produce less ions in air than the alpha particles. Then for the gamma particles or the gamma ray, um, gamma rays are not bent by a magnetic field. They carry no electric charge, that is they are neutral, meaning if you pass them in an electric field, they will neither deflect to the positive terminal or the negative terminal of the electric field. They will just pass through undetected. Now they are most penetrating of the three types of radiation in air, meaning they travel furthest in air and usually they, their movement can only be stopped by a thick block then they are not particles like i said i don't know if i said that earlier gamma rays are not particles but they are electromagnetic waves or electromagnetic radiations like light and the x-ray and then in gases they produce much less ions than alpha particles next thing we'll be looking at now will be the uses of radioactivity Number one says radiotherapy is used to destroy unwanted cells in cancer patients, especially the use of gamma rays to destroy tumors and cancerous and tissues in humans. Gamma rays are also used to sterilize instruments because they can destroy bacteria. Small quantities of radioactive isotopes. We have this phenomenon called isotopy. It is a phenomenon whereby an element has the same mass number sorry the same atomic number but different mass number example of um, such elements that exhibit this isotopy we have um, hydrogen um, where we have tritium uh, deuterium we also have um, chlorine chlorine 17 atomic number we have chlorine 35.5 and chlorine 37.5 now, these radioactive isotopes could be injected into the blood and used to trace health problems such as blockage in the blood vessel. X-rays, which is also another type of radioactive substance, are used in medicine to study internal organs. I'm sure some of you, before you got into school, um, you did X-rays to you know, make sure that every um, bone in the body and everything is intact. They use x-rays also when they want to make a um, diagnosis for treatment then also nuclear reactors produce a lot of heat energy which is used to generate electricity i know that countries like um, russia um, harness the nuclear energy that they have in their country and they use uranium majorly to generate electricity for use in their country and looking at the harmful effects of radioactivity now number one says it can cause nausea that's a feeling of wanting to drop of um, feeling of um, being dizzy that's nausea then it can cause some um, vomiting hair loss hemorrhage 
that is when um, uh, blood is leaking from from the body or when blood is leaking from the blood cells then it leads to the damage of the central nervous system where we have the brain and the spinal cord and even death and then it can also cause dna damage if you recall when we talked about genetics um, we said dna means deoxyribonucleic acid and then finally it raises the risk of cancer in people who are exposed to these um, radioactive substances so with this i believe you should be able to understand the concept of radioactivity it says it has to do with the spontaneous emission of dangerous particles which are usually found in radioactive elements and the reason why these dangerous particles are released is because the nucleus of these atoms or the nucleus of these elements are unstable so because of that instability or instability they try to release these dangerous particles from the protons and the neutrons or they release them as protons and neutrons in order to get a stable atom before they are okay